In this video, I will show you how I build this PC under the budget of 30,000 rupees. This is an AMD machine and I used a Ryzen 5 3400G processor, an ASRock B450 motherboard, 8GB of fast DDR4 RAM clocked at 3600MHz and a very basic power supply from Ant Esports. This machine is built for office use and I was limited by a budget of just 30,000 rupees so I decided not to use a discrete GPU. But that doesn't mean this machine is not good for any GPU intensive workloads because we are already having a Vega 11 GPU in the Ryzen 5 3400G processor. So first up we have a WD SSD. This is a 240GB model. WD Green. I'm going to leave the link to this one too in the description below. A very basic M.2 SSD that you can buy for just under 1500 rupees. I paid 1500 rupees for this. Then we have some crucial ballistics gaming memory. This is actually a little bit uh, on the higher side for the sort of build that we are doing. But I will be using this memory because I have it and I bought it for a really good price. Then for the CPU itself, we have the AMD Ryzen 5. 3400G. So this build is not going to be having any discrete GPU and we are going to rely entirely on the graphics chip on this CPU. So we have to be very conservative when it comes to the cost. This is going to be an office build and I was told that I'll need to build the entire computer under 30,000 rupees. So I'm not going to buy a discrete GPU for this machine. Then we have a B450 motherboard from ASRock. It took quite some time for me to get this board because it was not in stock. And I'm going to mention why I went with this motherboard over any other motherboard that was available with the B450 chipset. Then we have a, a very basic 400 watts Ant Esports VS400L power supply. This is a very basic power supply. But as we are very limited with the budget, I cannot do anything. So I will be keeping the PSU aside. I'm going to open the motherboard, we'll be installing the CPU. And on the way, I'm going to talk about how you should do things if you are someone who is building a computer for the very first time. So this is nothing interesting, just a manual, a driver disk, some M.2 screws. And we have the IO shield SATA cables, which we are probably not going to need. I'm going to keep all of this aside and I'm going to get to the motherboard itself. So here we have the ASRock motherboard. So the reason why I went with this motherboard over any other motherboard is these VRAM heat sinks. This these are really important if you want to keep your the if you want to keep your power delivery cool. And at this price range, at the price range of about five thousand to ten thousand rupees, I could not find any motherboard that came with these heat sinks. All of the motherboards in this price range was coming without any heat sinks so that was making me a little concerned about the heating with these vram components but ultimately i ended up getting this board because we have some decent cooling over this vram section and as we are going to run the 3400g i don't think this cpu is going to draw that much power that this power delivery is going to get hot so ultimately this is going to be a very decent setup now the very first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to just latch this up and we'll release the socket. Then I'm going to just get the CPU out of the tray. And by the way, this is not a brand new CPU that I got. This is a 3400G that I got for a really good price. So I decided to go with this one rather than going with the 3200G. 
3200G is also very similar to this 3400G but this 3400G is having a little bit higher multi-core and single core performance so I was lucky to get this chip for a good price so I bought it anyway so I will be installing this CPU as this is a Ryzen 5 CPU this is an AM4 socket CPU so the very first thing you will need to take into consideration is the triangle and the exact same triangle on the motherboard as you can see both of them align this triangle and this triangle so you will have to bring both the triangles together and just align the CPU over the socket and just slide it in and then simply get this retention arm down so there you have it there you installed the Ryzen 5 CPU over the socket so I will have to install this cooler that came with this CPU and in order to install this I'll have to get rid of the uh, socket mechanism that is already pre-installed on this CPU but before that we are going to install our 250 240 gigabyte SSD this is an M.2 drive so we don't need any sort of cables or anything to get this drive in So there we have it, a very basic looking SSD which is what I expected at this price range. So I'm going to just slide this drive into the M.2 slot. So that is how you install an M.2 drive onto a motherboard. It is actually that simple. Now what I will be doing next is I will be installing this CPU cooler over the CPU. But before doing so, I'm going to clean this CPU as thoroughly as possible using some microfiber cloth or some paper towels. CPU is nice and clean now. I'm doing the exact same thing for the cooler too now. Now I'm going to apply some thermal interface material over the CPU. In my case, I'm using the Noctua's NTH1. This is a really good paste for the price. But I almost forgot to get the Now before installing the cooler, I'm going to have a look at how exactly I'm going to be getting this cable attached to the CPU header on the motherboard so it is going to be like this and I'll have to manage the remaining cable if I'm going to install it like this it is obviously not going to reach so this is going to be the orientation that I will be going for So there is the CPU cooler installed properly and cable managed. You can see it looks nice and neat. From here on I will be installing the RAM. 
this is going to be a really simple step because installing the RAM is actually very easy. The only thing you will need to take into consideration is the RAM only goes in one single direction like this. You cannot flip it like this because the pins align in only a single manner. You cannot align it like this. So just make sure you are Make sure you are aware of this before putting any sort of pressure. So I will be using the last slot as I am going to install only a single module. So there is the RAM installed. Now I will be requiring to prepare the case from here. So that's what we are going to be doing. Before going for the case, let's unbox this power supply unit. We have an Ant eSports seal. And straight up we have a power cable and the PSU is also pretty well protected very nice to see so I'm going to slide it out of this So there we have the value series power supply from Anti Sports. This is a very basic unit. This is not going to be good even for running any sort of discrete GPU. No matter how little the power it draws, this PSU is not going to be sufficient if you want to run any discrete graphics card. So don't buy this if you want to run a discrete card. But in my case, I don't need a powerful I mean a PSU with some big wattage this is going to be sufficient for my needs a very basic one this we have a 24 pin cable then we have a, a 4 pin CPU cable and then SATA and Molex cables and that is it and that is more than what we need so I'm going to put this in the case and now it's time for me to show you the case itself so it is going to be difficult for me to show you the entire case because I'm very limited in terms of space but I'm going to do my very best to showcase so we are going to need to install a micro ATX motherboard in this case. So I am going to use the standoffs that are needed. So we are going to need these two, the one on the top, the one which is here and the one which is here too. But there is a little problem that we will be facing and that is going to be the fact that we are going to cover these two these three holes from where we are thinking about passing the cables so I'll need to just do some cable management and then I'm going to install this motherboard so I ended up installing the power supply unit behind the camera and there you can see we have the PSU installed all the cables coming out of it it looks like a big mess right now now i'm going to install the io shield this is really important so i'm going to align it
at this point we'll need to screw the motherboard down and I'm going to use my long screwdriver to do that Just get two screws, two, three screws first and then start screwing all the way down. Don't screw, uh, don't uh, just tighten a single screw all the way up. So there you have it the motherboard is fully installed into this case now we need to put the 24 pin motherboard cable in the cpu cable in here and that is it we don't have any hard drives or any sata drives running in this machine so that is going to be it for this build i'm going to plug everything up and then i'm going to show you the final build so the build is finally done I have plugged everything in the 24 pin cable the front panel USB 3 header the front panel connectors for the power hard drive LED and the reset button I have also plugged the fan in the rear fan and last I also plugged the CPU power cable so the build is all ready all I need from here is to do some cable management and which I have already done let me show it to you so there we go the cable management is all done so there is some decent amount of space here at the back where I can hide all the cables I've only tied two cables the USB 3 cable and the 24 pin ATX cable all the other cables are loose because there are not enough points where I can just plug these cables in so it is going to be just fine it is not a problem so there you have it the build is all ready now I'm going to plug it in and I'm going to install windows onto it